That piece right there, this mm -hmm. is done by Matisse. When I was like in the fifth grade, mm -hmm. I watched a 35 millimeter, him painting this lady with a white blouse, and I knew that was what I was going to do for the rest of my life. It never stopped. But my mentor was this guy, Clifford R. Breyer, mm -hmm. and he was really a great guy. Let's see, he's that, this guy right here. Mm -hmm. He was so cool, because mm -hmm. uh, he, like, he was like that Rooseveltian, you know, so he believed in sharing and caring. And he goes, whatever I teach you belongs belongs to everybody. Yeah. So what I share with you, everybody applying. So I set up an Art Mentors Fellowship where I I do these uh, color workshops in school. Yeah. Do you yeah. have to pass it on? And I have some great students, you know, that are really quite amazing. Russ Witten, he's, he's a little master. He's really incredible. It really is. That makes it worth the hard times and things, you know, just don't feel right. But you're not always, you know. So, well, it's a beautiful world, and I love it, and I like to share it, and, and I like to be a part of it, you know. And this is a great area. You can't beat it. I mean, yeah. I've been, yeah. well, just about all over the world. You know, either with my work or painting, you know. And I love it here more than ever, you know. Light is magic, especially in Perkins Cove. Go down to Perkins Cove. The light is not like any light anywhere yeah. else. And that inspired, like, a lot of people, like Edward Hopper and... Chatterton and of course Charles Woodbury, they all got yeah. into that. But what a great, you know, but it has such a great legacy and the people have come here for years and years. I was more aware of the art than anything else. And of course I met my partner and it was like magic. I was working in York Beach and I was painting. I had a room there and we magically met, you know, when it was just like, oh, I know what it is. So we lived on Berwick Road for a good number of years and uh, yeah. I, I worked there. I, well, I have three studios there. And, you can't stop and, like, you got to just keep moving on with it. Painting sometimes may not be just going up there physically working. It might be just sitting there looking, what, what's the next move? Because for me, color is like a, it's, it's, a, it's like a voice. And when I'm painting, I might, I might want to change this. So I may, to change that, I may have to go over here. And I, what I'm doing is I'm playing with a, a value structure, a complementary. Yeah. Like, say, I want to activate a red. I might need the equivalent of a green to take and activate that. Right. Yeah. And that's what kind of like gives people, I mean, because uh, people, actually the Italians really like my work. It was actually a tea house built in 1922. It's burnt down, but it's where, uh, uh, let's see, wait, 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 uh, you're going on, go to Shore Road, instead of going to the Cove, you make that turn. And as you make that turn, uh, there's a little cottage with all these arborvitae, and there's a, Hill. That used to set right up on there. Well, my friend Oswaldo, who owned it, his his father was a painter, and his and so I used to show there like for 19 years. All these people would come and look at this work, and uh, you know I I so I, I, he invited me over, and I painted for like two months. But I like it here because I like the feeling of the mountain area mothering you. You know, you feel like you're being surrounded by it, even in the winter. You know, and then of course the ocean is just a you know, just an amazing thing for me, you know. But, I don't know, did you know Isabel Luanda? Well, Isabel was one of the old, she was a model back in, she got a training in Philadelphia, Academy of Fine Arts, and she married an artist, Roy Luanda. And so she was invited by this guy, John Laurent, who, his father was Robert. Who, so Isabel uh, was invited to come and work in Perkins Cove, and she stayed ever since. Now, the funny thing of it is, yeah. Isabel used to uh, write for the York County Coast Star. She did the coastal pilot, and she would do a photograph with a little piece of poetry or a little writing about what that was. And I loved it so much when I graduated from college. And I was saving these all along. Yeah. And I was in a show at the Kuhn Gallery in 85, because we became really good friends. Well, yeah. she passed away. But she was eccentric, but unique. And she just, everybody loved her in the area. Yeah. And actually, when you go down uh, Footbridge, there's a stone that says Isabel Luanda. Had the spirit of art. She was a wonderful photographer, mm -hmm. really. So she was a master in my mind. Yeah. Uh, she, was a, she was such an advocate for the environment, you know. Because, yeah. I, I mean, being in town, like I've served on a clamshell commission since 78, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah. I started the first recycling in the Gunquist. I built sets out of the uh, out of the dump for shenanigans. I built uh, 13 sets in five years from Boston to Portland. So I've always like it's there. I can't stop it. And I, because sometimes I'm driving and 
You know, and I'll look and I'll go, especially when men take off their shirts, it's my job to look, you know. <laughs> I've donated like work. Like I donate to the library. So mm -hmm. the library has work. The fire company has work. That's this, nice. uh done away. I, I, because I have to share it. Once it's out there, it belongs to somebody else. Yeah. And I feel badly because I think the younger generation, mentoring is really an important yeah. thing. I was teaching at Hartwood College of Art. I actually helped build the school. And, um, you know, and so I, and I've always taught. And then, as I say, with the uh, color workshop, I now I have tons of material, models, because I want them to get excited about the visual aspect of what color can do. Yeah. And so I just lay it up, but I put it in a lobby. I don't go into a classroom. I do it in a lobby to get the teachers excited, to get everybody. Yeah. And then I... But I did that because of my Uncle Cliff. And so I, I, I well, I did it for, what, uh, 18 years. And I built a, I worked with the chamber, and I used to do uh, uh, posters for the nonprofit. Yeah. You know, like if you're working in color workshop, I would do these uh, studies where you, you find color in magazines. Actually, this is a model. That right there, well, it's a reproduction, but that's, all found from a magazine. I do a, tra I do a training with your eyes so you identify the purity of color. Is it brighter, lighter, duller, or darker in relation to what doesn't work and what does work? And so the color builds the color. You can look at the palette. It's not bright. It's really dull. You know, when you go out and then you go up and really look, you see something like bright and then go up and just walk right up to it. Watch how it just sort of like becomes a, a tonal, but it's because you've got all of these tones. Like looking at, like say right now, green. It's yellow green, orange green, blue green, violet green, red green, all of those greens are there. Mm -hmm. So you get the whole palette working with that one color. You can actually play and push and pull all these little goodies on that plane. I love contemporary abstract world. Yeah. But you know, it just leaves, especially in this local area, yeah. it, it leads, it, I do it because you can yeah. see like the piece over there. Yeah. I was like a study of, of rock in an abstract form. Mm -hmm. But I do those for me or my color workshop. One summer mm -hmm. I had over 180 works in restaurants in, really? in this town. Wow. That's what I was <laughs> hustling at when I was, yeah. I was a lot younger and I was able to yeah. do a lot, you know, maintain, still work at the gallery. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of members that have passed away like Beverly Allen. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was like really a major hitter in the contemporary world. She's mm -hmm. the one that designed um, acrylic paint is paint. I mean, you can find her in the uh, the International Women's Museum in uh, in Washington D.C. Uh, I remember when I was 14 years old going to uh, um, the uh, what is it, the Phillips Andover and saw this huge clam done in acrylic paint. Yeah. And I loved it, but I didn't. I don't look at titles and names. So I didn't pay attention. But I was like 14, but it left such an impression. And then I look at a book that was produced on Beverly, yeah. and she's standing in front of the building. I go, oh, my God, my <laughs> I have a friend that just passed away, Susan Baker, who was an engineer. Mm -hmm. She actually built um, uh, the uh, Kenny Bunk Library, the half, the new half of it. Yeah. She was an engineer for it. She lived on Berwick Road. Well, she passed away, unfortunately, too young. Well, Susan is only witness to, I had two experiences where my painting I put one piece of paint and the whole painting changed. And she was behind, I didn't even know she was in my studio, she was just there. Piece of paint down, she goes, Norman, if you ever told me that, I would not believe it. She couldn't believe it. And that little painting was what, a magic moment. And then it happened probably 20 years later with the mural I was doing up in Bristol, New Hampshire. And like I put one piece of paint and I felt the whole painting change. Well, I have to say, people that do own my work do love my work. And yeah. They like what it is. No, it's... But, uh, you can't help but smile when you look at it. Well, thank you. Isn't that a very nice? Well, you gave me a very nice compliment. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Well, any time, and I would pleasure. love to. Yeah. Uh, please come to our openings at the gallery. Absolutely. You,